Hello, Adam Rayner, Slingshot World TV, in the beautiful woodland and the soundtrack of the Kentish A2, because, well, I'm, I'm a fairly long way up a woodland track here. I'm in the company of two of the best shots in the lane. Go on, lads, do your thing. That's a reasonable distance away, that, uh, that spinner there. Can you see how far away it is? On my right-hand side is Mr. John Jeffries. Quote at the end of his C1 saying, I fucking love catapults. Very few people have actually read that, John. Have you noticed? Yeah. Yeah, you knew it, Sailor. Where's it gone, then? I broke the branch. He's broke the branch. I've, I've hung it <laughs> sideways. I've hung the bloody thing sideways. Oh, is it the yellow one instead, which That's is fine. over there? We're now looking at two edge-on spinners. Oh. Now, the reason we're in the Kentish woods today, chaps, is just a bit of a meet-up, not just only for a plink, but because I've got some hardware, which I like both there these guys. Go. You bugger. <laughs> still, still sideways. So I wanted to uh, have a little look at. We've got uh, some new toys from China, which I'm interested in these chaps seeing. Oh, there, and there John's brought along his bag of uh, his latest creations. Where's that spinner gone? Where's it gone? I've lost it, I've lost it. Oh, there it is. No, it isn't. And, uh, man who's just slapped the crap out of a spinner from over my other shoulder is the inestimable Mr. Mark Clark. It does look impressive when you pull back, because by the time you've zoomed all the way back, Mark, you can't even see these damn targets in my lens here, but... So, uh, how are you feeling, Gazer? Yeah, good, always good. But yeah, the reason we're here in this big old Kentish woodland is because I've got some lovely bits of kit. I've got some Chinese stuff, and I fancy having a look at... Well, John's bought a box of all his latest creations. How about that for a contrast? The legendary uh, antler catapult from this one, made by Mr. Jeffries. And then to this insane high-tech thing here. OK, we're going to have a little uh, closer look at that. Right, well, uh, a rather interesting looking part of kit there is probably Mr. John Jeffries. Some rather handsome bits from Mr. Paul Dahl Leathercraft there, yes? One, yeah. He's a talented man, isn't he? He does make just beautiful bits of kit. Did you know about him long before you... Obviously, I'd met him because of the magazine and stuff, but... Do you know about him anyway? No. So, did you find out about him? Because no, yeah, it's yeah, such a yeah, no, no. I'm so proud. I was... Uh, journalist fishing furiously. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just crap. No, it's lovely because, yeah, it's, uh, especially those game bag things are brilliant, aren't they? Yeah, old, uh, old yeah, you, you christened that a bit, didn't you, I take it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yes. Yeah. Oh. So, um, where to start? That's a Peli case you've got there. Yeah. Peli can. Generally speaking, you avoid using a Pelican case for international air freight because it says, steal me, I'm valuable, better than anything. <laughs> so what is inside there? Let's just zoom in. Let's go turn this into one of those hands videos where we're looking in close up this. A few racing builds. Wow. A few Apex PFS. Tell you what, let's... Um, you can pass one over one at a time and we'll get a lovely, fabulous close-ups. Now, one thing I can tell you is we're filming this at a time that makes us seeing this ahead of one or two of the customers, eh? Okay. Apex PFS, look at this thing. You know, they say, oh, the photographs don't do it justice. 1080p, mate, this does look freaking sumptuous. Wow. Gorgeous. Yeah, this one was a custom order for Mr. PFS himself, Bats. So yeah, this, this is the one yeah. that Mr. known as Bats Edwards is going to be, I'm going to snap it into focus, is going to be beyond slightly vexed to see that, whoop, we're seeing it before he does. This is exquisite. Let's just turn this around in the hand and look at this thing. Wow. Tell us about this material, John. Uh, the face is OD Green G10, the core is Bone Linen Regatta, and the palm swell is Plant Stone. That so that's the, the G10 you described first? Yeah. Bone, bone Linen, linen Regatta. Yeah, and the swell is Plant Stone. And Plant Stone is a resin containing... Yeah, that one's quite Highlands based, because Bats wanted it roughly Scottish themed, there's pine cones, there's quite a there's like gorse, there's grass. Like I say, with a white background with a liner, you can see quite 
you get a lot of depth for that material, especially being a clear resin. Yes, I'm struggling to look into it here and failing because, as usual, your finish is so unbelievably shiny. Here we go. But oh wow, looking into that material, gorgeous. Oh, bats, you're going to die, dude, but I'm, I'm on absolute embargo. I'm not allowed to put this video up until the man who's getting this piece of art has actually received it, eh? So, but yes, yeah, sorry, bats, you're in Scotland, I'm down south, I saw it first. Yeah, a few other little builds. Snapping back in the focus again. Oh, man. This team's going to be a matching set. These are only at 600 grit in a minute. It's actually, if you leave that there, I shall zoom in. So they're... they're during the process of yeah. being made, is yeah, it? We're halfway through sand in a minute. Wow. Yeah. It's not quite focusing on this. I've one them close up, sorry. It was just because I'm stubborn. There we go. We'll go into the front of the picture and focus, you brute. Oh, look at that. Gosh. The PFS. Known as the pickle fork shooter. That's it. Because yeah. it's got narrow tines like a fork for pickles. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's a few of the uh, the Apex Pro Hunters. Gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Feature of again the, the blaze orange. This is the, uh, the outdoorsman sort of theme. Well, outdoors is what they're shamelessly selling it to Americans because we don't have to wear blazes of orange, do we? Shooting deer? No, not at all. Not at all because well, in England, if you've actually face. got a license to do this stuff and you're clearing, you do that. But in America, you have to. Have this blaze of orange. I have loads of camo then. <coughs> orange. I say from the front end they're camouflage on the business end, and obviously on the rear end they're orange. So if you yes. drop it, they're easy to locate. Which is a just heck a of a help. Behind the builds. Just look at the superb quality of this. They are so tactile. Wow, John. It's got to be one of the best makers in the UK, dude. Absolutely. And of course, although that's where the, the art is now, it was just that whole reminder. This has got its video all of its own, this one. Did you keep the old five pound note that you finally finished this with, John? <laughs> it's an old one, there. This is, this is a John Jeffers. It's got its very own video in 4K. This is one of yours, John, is it? It is, and he, he finally polished it with uh, an old fashioned fiver. Two Beautiful. different antler bone, two different antlers. How perfectly matched, one with the even flat instead of 45 degree coronet, one that was only 2 out of 30 that was perfectly even. The brass pins are much longer than most people tend to put down these things fully functional, but I have only shot it carefully and with lead or plastic. Beautiful. Is that a beast you knocked over yourself? No, unfortunately not. No, that was so my dad's mate works for the Forestry Commission. So oh, got a bag of 30 antlers. Out of 30, I produced two of them. One had a perfect John does good deer stalking. The top one had a... Uh, Perfect fault because I don't use anything that I can't. I yeah. use the strength of the antler. And, and that, hence, that's why you put yeah. the, jo the join there to yeah. bring the two pieces of antler together. Yeah. It's beautiful. The man who truly appreciates it if you've not seen that before. Well, I, I, just, I, I still feel it. embarrassed and guilty for fucking owning that. I haven't, I haven't seen it. And, and for the massive gesture giving to it, giving that to me, people have impugned John Jeffrey's sexuality. <laughs> they can't believe. <laughs> no, really, truly, I've embarrassed it, so. It's just, still every time I look at it, I just think, oh God, it's, it's just beautiful. It's a beautiful catapult, isn't it? It is exquisite. Uh, I hate to say this, but I don't think there's a better antler one ever made, I've ever seen, in any, even in any pictures or anything ever. It's anywhere. like glass, that finish. It is, yeah. Wonderful. Uh, still, it's a bit of nostalgia, because we're here look at the new stuff. Have you had a heft of that, that new frame that I assembled, dude? Let's have a... You have. This let's is have it. a little look at this. This is it. There, look. And we've made the gap as narrow as possible. You've noted that uh, you can't quite get it quite as narrow as you like, but that does look pretty sort of... Uh, yeah, that's pretty... That, that's sort of booyah shortened, isn't it? That's pretty close, I mean... My, my, a bit box underneath it, we're not using it. I'll shoot, I'll shoot 62 mil on yeah, that. So that's not far off, That's probably it? 65. Yes. So it's just as near as damn it there. Yes. Interesting very piece of kit. Very comfortable. Comfortable grip. Did you find you could shoot it straight? Yeah. I yeah, shoot. I could shoot anything yeah. straight, me. <laughs> John is, of course, a uh, South Par versus, what should we call it? Are you right handed, John? Yeah. You are, but you're right hand hold, aren't you? Yeah, left eye dominant. And that means that, well, technically, it's like, uh, they call it being goofy if you're a snowboarder. It's what I happen to be in the same place. 
although I'm just a terrible shot and I'm not sure whether I've got right eye, left eye, whether I'm just crap at it. <laughs> Have you done a little eye-dominant test? Um, do you know, I haven't, but I really do want to. It's something that's a proper subject, isn't it? That's it. There you go. So you can, you can, however you shoot, you can eventually get it exactly how you want it. That's the uh, the big plot, the, the massive adjustability of it. I'll shoot, I'll shoot really narrow. Well, almost PFS narrow. Uh -huh. And I like to have my sight lined up exactly level with the band at 10 meters that is yes so we this catapult can take you to where you want to be and that's uh and you can see can you see that glow? Yeah, absolutely how much that glow that glows well actually yeah, we're picking it up on the camera if i just zoom in a tiny little bit like that oh mate it is like a special spot and it's 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 showing up there and it's dark in here isn't it today yes although i'm silhouetting on the thing there's still a definite green thing even when it's out of focus yeah that's um very comfortable to hold. I you know, really, you know, love a lovely little hammer grip. That cool. Come on in. Let's get. Nice step. thing is, yeah, we can take the top off, turn it around, and it becomes other hand hold for John. Let's well, do that. For John, yeah, let John let's have do a that. that handy yeah. hold. Okay, because it's on left at the minute. All right, let's fix that. The authentic raindrop on the lens. Look, we've flipped it round. We've changed the gap. Man, smacking the crap out of the spinners down there. What are you shooting at over there? Let's have a look. Pop. Let's zoom in there. Pop. These guys are doing shots. I'll be honest, when you showed us the super lightweight, I've got these spinners hanging up in the woods thing. The only thing I thought was, uh, are they going to hang up at 90 degrees to the drunk? Curses. You know what, work on it, although you might smash them if you hit it. One of those lanyard um, buckles with a swivel on it. Hey, these guys are shooting edge on to this thing. And <laughs> John Jeffries just clipped it. Which, when you consider you're looking at the edge of a spinner, even though it was an 80 mil one so far away that you just saw me struggling to find it in this here clearing and the, the geezers are stood over here and you just did that with that yeah. yes well uh all i can say is that the chinese dude who brings that thing into the country by the post he's gonna love you to bits he's just demonstrated that thing can do astonishing accuracy it is a nice frame yeah I'll you're impressed I'd... Yeah, not saying I'd normally shoot, I'll say because I like my fork tips literally between my thumb and forefinger. You like call that brave hold, don't you? Yeah, both yeah. the Mustang shoots, but I'll say this is a very nice frame indeed. You know you've got it in your hand, certainly. Yeah, it's a decent weight. And you could add a bit to that as well, there's a space in there to add a bit more lead if you want. Yeah, exactly, yeah. It's got a decent uh, Donny Gennaro rating. Is that weight? Where did you find that? Under my seat. Is it heavy? Yes, then it's valuable, put it away. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, well the rain's just starting to trickle down on us a little bit here. So I think we might be uh, calling this a vid. Guys, it's been really cool to see you. Okay, this is Adam Rayner. Signing out for Slingshot World TV. Enjoy the messy background office with the Seaball Kenya catapult, the uh, Pro Shot keyring, and uh, the little bottle opener from... Uh, Matt Redding. Anyway, sorry. This is the Dragon King 2. It's the design of a massively famous Chinese champion. He won the whole national thing in China in 2016. He didn't in 2017. Came back in 2018. So the guy's a demon shot. Uh, he's the first person ever to uh, use fibre optics, apparently. Um, and this has been, as I say, one fiendishly challenging thing to shoot. Um, all that rattling is because what you get a bag with the product in. And in this case, I've ordered or requested every single set of the sights, which I'll show you in detail. Um, main plot is, uh, it comes with a set of sights, but you can order any one of six extra sets to go on the top. It comes as an OTT. One of the amazing things that you can fit to this is a set of tips to uh, make it into ooh, a TTF. Sorry, I'm dropping ball bearings about the place here. I'll explain why in a moment. You can wait to the handle. Okay, this is the uh, the head, the business end, as it were. I've already fitted a sight to it. 
damned hard to film, um, which is why I'm on so many takes. Here. I'll, just, I'll show you that, and then uh, whip that out in a bag here, and you can see the handle. This is aircraft aluminium alloy. It's got a rather nice textured thing to it, and you hammer grip it. Of course, right or left hand. See the cavities? Uh, you can add weight to it on the spec. It says it goes from uh, 302 to 350 grams by adding some steel balls. There was a 9.5, so there may be more interstices. You could get the weight higher if you filled these cavities completely with lead. Okay, let's assemble this thing off camera uh, with the steel balls and just add a little bit of mass to it, and we'll uh, have a look at it in a bit more detail. We've changed angle, and this is now a bit of a hands video. Um, the astute will... Uh, wonder what colour pink that rubber band is. This is the uh, stuff. It's also from the Jinping Dies Just Shoot it .com. And this is... Uh, this is one of the uh, lady champions in China and um, advocates sports slingshot promote national culture leading the industry trend of arch has been initiated never imitated I can't read never surpassed a little bit of Chinese English there I have no Chinese at all but that's the rubber that's uh, on this here slingshot um, as is the uh, oh, interesting little pouch it's a ball gripper pouch can you see the shape of that Anyway, we digress. That's the uh, the software. Back to the hardware and the Dragon King 2, $85 plus an extra $10 if you have a selection of sites. One thing that uh, I've failed to do in previous takes and I won't in this one is point out that you do get the most wonderful pack of, uh, of spares. Um, there's chunks of fibre optic in there. That's better. And uh, Allen keys and all the little fiddly bits that can fall out and disappear. You get. Now... Here's about the sights. Let's uh, take you through the sights. First of all, um, they clip onto one or other of these blocks, and the blocks can move left and right. That's the uh, the bit that's facing you as you're holding it. If we turn it around, you can actually see that there's a whole bunch of articulations and stuff on there. Right, I'll tell you what I'm going to do now. We'll break this shot, refocus again, and go for extreme macro, fixed focus. Okay, guys, here we are. Let's check out the details on the Dragon King 2. Here's the articulations, the little ruler marks. And you can move these two blocks left and right to change the gap. I think the minimum gap is 62 mil, and the biggest is 115. So you can match, if you are fortunate enough to be an expert and know what your width is, you can do that. And... Uh, the sights, uh, you can clip them into each end. There's a little hole there. And as you can see, I fitted this into the uh, side of the frame that when I'm holding it, hammer grip comes like that. It's upright for a, uh, a TTF use. Right, let's get in a little bit closer on these here sights. Let's try a, a super macro. Now, as well as the main sight arrays. You get two of these little devices which are to bolt on to give you more sort of height references. Um, thing is, the one thing they haven't got lots and lots of in the factory is time for lots of tiny precision work. So you get these little bits of fibre optic. And here's how you fit them. It's taken me a little bit of effort to work out how to do this. We even had to play with the camera. Plot is, you take a nice hot flame and you blob the end like that. Blob. And that just creates a bigger piece to gather the light up. Oh, take about umpteen hollowed holes to do than it looks. A little tiny piece of fibre optic, a little piece of metal. Cut it off. Is that on camera? Yes, it is. Oh, it's probably painful to watch. Oh. <laughs> wobble, wobble, wobble. It's nervous. This is about take 16. Okay, now, having got the thing through there, you just blob the other side. Okay, we've got that focus. Yes, we have. Quick, in comes the heat. Whoop, there we go. That. Is that one fitted? A little bit braver. Let's see if I can just do it with my fingers this time. Instead of poncing around with a wobbly pair of pliers. Oh, sorry, I went off camera there, but there's the red one. Okay, let's just give that a quick blob. Uh, whoa. The thing about doing that is you get a swollen end at each bit. And, um, well, if I bring in uh, the Blue Peter one, here's one I prepared earlier. Sorry, let's get that focus. This one here is, whoops, the, uh, the twofer.
Right, so that's that little part. As uh, appallingly filled as it is, that's as good as I can do it. Oh, but yeah, that's how you add the little bits of fibre optic if uh, you need to repair them. Right, here we are in close-up vision, complete with the sound of Kango hammers in the background. The uh, frame's got a little bit of printing underneath it. And this is uh, those particulations again, as I keep calling them. The little lines that enable you to make sure you've got it the same amount on each side. There's two Allen keys to uh, hold that chunky block on that side. Two Allen headed, I should say, two Allen keys, two Allen headed bolts, and one on that side. The uh, goldeny one that you can see actually on the movable part is, in this case, the one whoops that anchors the shaft that your sight goes on. So there are two sizes of shaft. There's uh, each one comes with both. Sorry about the important manicure. There's the long one. That's on a short one. That is what's left in each of these boxes, a long and a short shaft, and that enables you to adjust the up and down of the whole sighting system. Right now as well as uh, the main sighting piece and uh, let's just have a quick look at those there's uh, again awful manicure you've got just a single fiber optic one if that's what you prefer I've got a fiber optic one across so that's two you've got another one which is uh, an interesting shape it depends on how you get distracted or not you might prefer that to be stood off and be a little bit more precise about how you're doing it so it's like a, I describe that as a C shape, really, although that would be looking at it like that, coming in over the top. And then we've got this one, which is just a crosshair on its own, if that's what you prefer. Let's just turn it around so you can see that uh, actually line up. It's, funny thing is, that's actually slightly longer than the uh, other sites. He says proving that one absolutely is the same length. <laughs> I thought it was. But it's a nice neat line up there. That's just the crosshair. Okay, so there's uh, just a couple more of these things to show. This one is uh, just two fibre optics instead of a fibre optic and a crosshair. Quite long pieces. A bit vulnerable, but if you break them, you can fix them. Because they give you new bits. Finally... We've got this one. Now it all comes down to where you fancy that site actually ending up and what variety. That was my choice. If I lean that back a ways. Um, as well as that piece there, you get this one. Let's, uh, here we go. Um, and that one, again, awful manicure. There's two little pieces. The idea is if you're further down range, you'll be referencing uh, a higher up one of these to actually aim with, and I've added the others just for the sake of it. Okay, that piece there is where you'd adjust the, uh, this for going up and down. That knurled knob there is the one that you uh, undo to raise it up and down on the shaft, so the whole sighting system can uh, go up and down a little bit. And there was another one, there's another one. Oh yes, that one right at the back. Ooh, where's the thing, yes. That one right at the back is the bit that tightens onto that shaft there, which is how you fix those sights. So yeah, there's a shaft for that one, there's a shaft for the other one, and so it, it, basically they all come apart in all sorts of directions, and there's so many different options. Let's just flip that upside down so you can see a bit more of it. Out of focus there. The TTF, or through the forks version, is another little block that clips onto the end and sticks up and there's another whole set of sights and those are other bits that you can purchase but uh, the main plot is Dragon King 2 quite the most astonishingly tech catapult there is um, it's all about having a look at all the little bits and bobs what you really want to know is in the hands of an expert shooter this should be able to shoot a spinner edge on at 33 feet 